Simfa Hagen. Welcome here at the ICD and uh, it's an honor for us that you join us at the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy and thank you for your keynote speech upstairs. We'd like to ask you some uh, couple of questions and the first question is about uh, your lecture today you spoke about the cultural diplomacy and cultural aspects of uh, contemporary nation branding. Uh, how do you think bilateral business uh, negotiations should be treated when cultural differences are acting as a barrier between uh, between different countries in a in a bilateral mm -hmm. uh, perspective. Well, first of all, um, if um, uh, cultural differences are creating a barrier uh, also for for business relations, um, uh, then uh, then it's uh, obvious that you first have to start to build up interest. It should be of the interest of the other side to uh, yes. come to an agreement with you. Every agreement is only uh, set up uh, and realized when it's beneficial for both sides. Of course, yeah. a, uh, uh, an agreement which is only bene beneficial for one side is never, uh, never successful or never no, uh, accepted in the end. Okay. So that's the first step. Second, so you have to define what's in the interest of the other side Mm -hmm. yes. to uh, give me what I want because mm -hmm. uh, I know normally what, 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 what was in my own interest but you should uh, you should wonder yourself what's in the interest of the other side so that he can agree with you that's the, uh, that's the second one and to know that you should um, uh, be interested in the other one's culture because if you know what their values uh, are, what, what, what their uh, culture is uh, in the end, then you can, can see uh, easier what, what, what's in, in, in their interest. And uh, uh, I, I traveled quite a lot in the, in the world in the, in the past, and I realized that although people uh, think that they have uh, a very special culture or a very special nationalist um, uh, element or, or, or values that people share much more than they think and therefore cultural diplomacy uh, people to people contacts are so important because then you see what you share and when you see what you share then you can also overcome differences Okay, thank you. Our second question is, uh, is uh, what are the main challenges facing intercultural business negotiation, negotiations in today's globalized world and also how can cultural diplomacy be an effective tool for softening up the business environment mm -hmm. in the realm of an economic crisis world? Yeah, well, um, the, uh, the, the main challenge is um, according to my view, um, short term versus long term. Mm -hmm. It might seem in the short term that it's in your interest, for example, to close your borders, close your borders for, for, for trade, close your borders mm -hmm. for people, close your borders for, for everybody. On the short, because people they are afraid that they will lose that your companies are better than their own companies so that they, they will take over your employment, etc. etc. Yeah. Um, on the short term, it, it, it's true. It might influence negatively your, your, um, uh, your jobs or a separate company. But in the longer term, trade is in the interest of both sides. Both sides can profit. You can get a better product for a, a cheaper price uh, and otherwise you, you produce it yourself. Because mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, you, you can spend more money uh, on, 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 on different products. Uh, you earn also uh, more money, etc. So it's, um, uh, the, the main challenge is to, to make clear that in the longer term, also, there is a profit for you. Uh, we, as, as, as the Netherlands, uh, we are always an, uh, we have been an, an open country, 
uh, not only uh, we are uh, exporting, mm -hmm. but we are also importing uh, goods. We have never seen import of goods a threat to our own uh, industry because we are exporting at the same time. But we focus on those issues where we have added value, added value in comparison with other countries. And we ex uh, expect that other countries have also added value to certain products, uh, pro certain production, and they c uh, th those goods are imported in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So it's it's an, it's an open economy. It's from both sides. Um, our economic growth at this moment is not really high, no. but nevertheless, the, the growth we have mm -hmm. is realized through our exports. Yeah. On the same time, uh, the investments, the the, the national investments. Uh, are very limited. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the aspect which is growing is foreign investment, foreign investments in the Netherlands. Um, we have a special agency, the Netherlands Foreign Investment Agency, who is trying to, to uh, identify foreign investors uh, who are interested in investing in the Netherlands. And then also attract them. And attract them, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's that's one of the reasons why we have a investment climate also linked to our tax system, which is profitable for foreign investments in the Netherlands. So um, yeah. the challenge is to, to, to see how you can profit yourself, but in the same time also to see that, that other can profit from, yeah. from, from their investments. So it's, mm -hmm. that's the main challenge. Think about both parties. Yeah. 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 Um, to follow up on the bilateral business, how do you see the role of public opinion in a bilateral business agreement and trade negotiations and especially when looking at a case study such as the Ukraine now like the bilateral um, as such as Ukraine wants to join the European Union and the relations between that so yeah. how, what is your opinion about that? Well, um, the role of public opinion in the, in the, in the, in the framework of bilateral business uh, trade negotiations is, uh, is very important because uh, public opinion can, in, well, is, can not only, but, but will inf influence uh, decision makers. If, for example, we are uh, having a free trade agreement uh, negotiation with the United States of America, and our public opinion is influenced through um, Newspapers, articles, and in, 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 in social media, etc., uh, that certain products um, uh, are manipulated mm -hmm. or bad for your health. Uh, then immediately there is a, uh, a public opinion who says to the decision makers, "You should uh, limit the uh, possibility of import of those products. Uh, so you should limit your your uh, free trade agreement." It, it has immediately consequences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the same time. Uh, the idea of having a, uh, a membership, a future membership of the European Union was for the Ukrainian people uh, the trigger to uh, demonstrate against their government who were not interested in, in, in future membership. What I uh, thought that was not really wise um, and was more fueling the conflict or the possibility of a conflict than, than uh, preventing it was the behavior of certain uh, European politicians who immediately said that oh you, you can become a member of the European Union even if we, if we are willing to accept a enlargement of the European Union it will take yeah. years I, I heard that it will, it will not happen in our lifetime it will, it will, it, well if, if you look to the criteria it, it might happen but it's, if you look to the criteria before we have the, the Copenhagen criteria, yes. uh, before they fulfill these criteria, it, it will take yeah. 10 years mm -hmm. at least. Then we have negotiations in the European Parliament, negotiations between all the member states. Uh, well, let's say 15 years. Well, 15 very years, uh, uh, very optimistic, very optimistic. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, for, we're, we're with, optimist. a country, with a country like, like Turkey, we discussed already 35 years yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for membership. Yeah, huh? yeah. And, and, the, and, 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 and well, I don't know whether we will witness a membership of Turkey to the European Union. Discussion of 35 years. So it will at least 15 years, maybe 30, 40, 50 years. So then it's, it's, it's not wise behavior of those politicians uh, to, to, to uh, pretend as if they could be member uh, of the European Union tomorrow. 
uh, which provoked which provoked uh, uh, yeah. the behavior of certain uh, demonstrations. Mm. So it's uh, if you public opinion is uh, has a, a huge role um, in preventing conflicts, in creating conflicts, in uh, also in, 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 in the success of certain negotiations. Uh, so therefore, we should also be very much aware of the uh, consequences of our words, especially uh, yeah. diplomats and, and politicians should be aware that, that their words can, can have uh, consequences which are not uh, in, in, in your own interest or in your own intention. Yes. And uh, where do you see the future of the European economic development, both speaking sector, uh, geographically wise and uh, sector wise? Um, the European Union uh, still will still be uh, uh, of great importance in the world economy mm -hmm. uh, in the future. But there will be also a shift towards the east. Uh, the, 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 uh, we now, uh, if we look to the world economy, the, the European Union uh, takes a, a great part of this, this uh, whole uh, gl global economy. Uh, the, 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 uh, the East will gain more uh, in the past, but we also in the future we still will be um, a, a, an important market. Uh, not only a important consumer market, but also a uh, important production market. Because I think that also we uh, changed the idea that there would be a labor diversion, uh, that that Europe will be more um, uh, brains and more services, mm -hmm. and and production would would, would go uh, towards. Uh, Eastern countries or uh, the, the, the Brazil, um, we more and more are convinced that we need both to have a service economy. You need also uh, a production economy. Uh, it, it, you, you cannot limit yourself to to, uh, to one part of the economy. But there will be a diversification. Uh, but the only way to to uh, be successful in the past as you in, in the future as as european union will uh, be linked to innovation mm -hmm. uh, linked to global challenges if we if we uh, see the main challenges in in the world uh, it's the demographic change mm -hmm. it's the climate change and it's the scarcity of resources uh, and, 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 and especially the, the uh, scarcity of, uh, of energy and, 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 and water. So if we are capable of innovation mm -hmm. and introducing uh, innovative products which can contribute to uh, solve these main uh, these, these problems or the main challenges, then we will gain also a greater part of the future uh, economic uh, growth. That's yeah. that's obvious. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. The uh, maybe you can share a couple of words uh, to us about your opinion about cultural diplomacy and how it maybe can work as a, uh, a strength to strengthen the European Union cultural diplomacy. So mm -hmm connect the countries more because also upstairs you said there are also people who want to get rid of the uh, idea of a closer European Union so what is your opinion about that? Um, well uh, the, uh, the idea um, that it's in your interest to um, uh, to close your borders uh, to uh, uh, limit yourself from from any context with other cultures uh, it's it, it's a fake idea uh, of course the the globalization the interconnectedness through internet makes that we are more and more one world people are insecure for that because I think that those parties gain support because the ordinary parties don't have a proper answer to the fears of the people. We should have a proper answer. That's the first. Second, 
um, cultural diplomacy can um, uh, play a important role in this uh, respect. Because uh, through cultural diplomacy, uh, through the connectedness of people to people, uh, we can show what our shared values are, what our shared elements are. So don't concentrate on the differences, but mm -hmm. concentrate on what we share. Then you see, according to my view also, uh, that the differences are not so big as we thought on beforehand. And that you don't have to be afraid of certain other cultures, other elements. Um, so also in this respect, according to my view, we should, through cultural diplomacy, we can make clear to people that it's not um, necessary to be afraid or necessary to to to, to close your, your your own world for yeah. for for other other uh, developments or other interests. Um, but it's we are, we are still, although we have a globalized world uh, and, and and a change uh, which is quite rapid, mm -hmm. uh, we haven't have new institutions. Uh, which can play a role in this globalized world. The older yeah. institutions are all gone. Eh? The church, the, the, the uh, community, uh, it, it's gone. Uh, so we don't have new institutions and we have a new world. And therefore people are afraid. Yes. Uh, the changes are too quick, according to their view. They don't recognize their own uh, neighborhood. Um, and cultural diplomacy can play a role to make sure th uh, that people feel at home again. Yeah, that's, that's a very nice uh, opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. final question. Yeah, as spoken about the European Union, when you look at nation branding, do you think that companies really should point out their uniqueness, their differences, or that globally the uh, European Union should be seen as, as one big union, as we're more different ones together? Um, it's a difficult question. Um, according to my view, uh, in certain areas, it's easier to uh, to to um, promote yourself as European. Mm -hmm. In other, it's easier to promote yourself as Dutch or as German. Um, for example, when I uh, when I was Minister of Economic Affairs, I, I several times uh, visited China. Uh, as uh, head of a uh, of a delegation mm -hmm. of companies trade mission and I've visited with certain companies and I said well we are Dutch whether they are from the north or the south or the west or the east of the Netherlands doesn't matter mm -hmm. the week after I visited it there was a uh, governor mm -hmm. of the, the northern part of the Netherlands. Uh, the yeah. week after, there was a, a governor of the of the, the city of Amsterdam. Uh, then, etc., uh, etc. Et a Chinese uh, minister doesn't even know where the Netherlands is, uh, uh, so he doesn't know what what uh, Maastricht or Groningen or Middelburg is. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to promote yourself as uh, the gateway to Europe. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you will not get access to uh, <laughs> to those people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that one of the main uh, issues of, of Dutch um, um, promotion mm -hmm. is that we are gateway to Europe. That's why people are uh, are interested in the Netherlands. That's why why other countries are interested in the Netherlands. That's why other companies are interested to invest in the Netherlands because we have a. Uh, a harbor, uh, we have good uh, logistic systems mm -hmm. where we can spread yeah, the whole yeah, of part of Northwest Europe. A we're a hub. We're a hub, yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Yeah. That's so, therefore, it's, uh, it's a combination. But uh, when I go, for example, to, to, to Belgium mm -hmm. to export my goods, then uh, I will not promote yeah. myself as a, as a European country, but mm -hmm. I will promote myself as a Dutch company. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Really an honor and pri privilege to uh, have you here with us today. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure and I wish you all uh, success, uh, yes. not only with the Institute, but especially also with your future careers. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.